the Jewish religion. So we were speaking of Abraham and Isaac, and at, this is at the heart of the story of Judaism, which traces its history back to Abraham. To Abraham was made a promise that he would become a great people. To that people was promised the land of Canaan. To that people were, was given the law, the Torah of God. And herein lies the heart of the historical religion of Judaism. Well, what are some key ideas of the Hebrew Bible? And these ideas come from the text Culture and Values, uh, which I believe I referred to in an earlier lecture. Well, in Culture and Values, the authors uh, Cunningham, Reich, and Fitchner Rothis suggest four key ideas in the Hebrew Bible. I'd like to review those with you briefly. The first is monotheism, that there is one God only. Not just that there is one great God above other gods, but there, the, there is a single deity. And that this single deity is set apart from creation and separate from creation and distinct from creation. And in fact, cannot be pictured by creation. A second major idea in the Hebrew Bible is the idea of covenant. That this God, this one God, has come into a special relationship with with a historical people, uh, namely the Jewish people, the descendants of Abraham. Uh, this God has a, a relationship with them. God has made promises to the Jewish people. The Jewish people are called to respond in faithfulness to the law of God. And so these, uh, this covenant entails the third category, which is ethics. So this one God has, has given uh, the people a a law to follow as part of their covenant relationship. And this law dictates various aspects of how these people are to live and respond in faithfulness to God. They are supposed to do things like honor the Sabbath day, uh, go to service on Sabbath, eat certain kinds of food, uh, abstain from certain kinds of behavior, conversely to uh, engage in certain kinds of behavior on the other hand, right? So probably the most uh, famous example of, of ethics from the Hebrew Bible would be what is most commonly known as the Ten Commandments, but a very ethical, uh, a very heavy focus on ethics in the Jewish religion. The last category that's very important is models and types. Now, basically what I mean by this is that earlier situations and illustrations repeat themselves as patterns in the biblical story. So this happens in various ways over and over again. So for example, if you read the story of the book of Genesis, you will notice that there is a, a, a passage in which Abraham is released from Egypt. Now that anticipates something that happens in the book of, of Exodus in which Israel is released from slavery in Egypt. And so that we see that there was a pattern that repeats. Abraham is brought into a bad situation in Egypt and he is released by Pharaoh. Then the Israelites themselves are brought into bondage in Egypt and then they are released by Pharaoh. Later on, the language of that release, the language of the Exodus shows up. Uh, the, the Israelites are sent into exile away from Canaan and eventually they come back to Canaan. And that, that return to Canaan is like, it's equated, it's equated to the Exodus. Uh, so there's a pattern, there's a type, that a pattern of, of bondage and release that keeps getting repeated. Je, uh, Abraham in, in Egypt, Israel in Egypt, Israel in the other nations, and then released from their bondage in the other nations and brought back to the land. So there is this repetition of patterns. And not only this, there's a heavy focus on models that these patterns uh, are to be repeated maybe in the life of the later people. Uh, we are to appreciate people as ethical exemplars and follow in their footsteps. Uh, we are to uh, take people as behavioral models. So models and types. Well, we're going to take a, a pause here, and there's so many more things that could be said about the Jewish faith and the Jewish uh, religion in general or in, in the history of the Jewish people. Uh, but we need to go ahead and introduce your journal prompt for Unit 4. All right, so this is actually a, a, a journal with a choice. You can answer this in, in one of two ways. First, 
Has the Bible or another religious text had an impact on your own life, the life of your family? And how would you describe that impact? Okay, so this is just narrating some of your, your personal experience with uh, religious traditions and religious belief. And second, you might take a different choice here. We are all inheritors of a society that has been profoundly shaped by the biblical tradition. How has the Bible impacted our culture? Should we continue to study the Bible as part of our cultural history? Why or why not? And you can share your view on that issue as well. Now, I chose this knowing that there can be potentially some, some uh, conflict when you discuss such things, uh, but I think it's healthy. And there is a, a skill that we all need to develop, and that's the ability to speak civilly about our disagreements and our beliefs. I have a good friend who, who said, always told me something like, you know, they say you're not supposed to talk about religion and politics at the dinner table, but I don't know anything else that's worth talking about. So uh, we need to be able to express uh, our personal beliefs and perspectives and to sp speak about them in reasonable and measured and civil ways and share those with other people with empathy. And so think about that like this. It's just an opportunity to uh, share some of your views and opinions on these matters as a way to um, developing civil discourse in the area of religious belief. All right, we're going to go ahead and shift gears to a discussion of, of Christianity. Uh, in a moment, you'll see a chart that kind of uh, narrates how Judaism developed into the Christian uh, tradition. Uh, of course, as we, we move into the Christian tradition, we move into uh, a, a artistically into a tradition which overlaps very much so with the Roman imperial period. And so much of the artwork will have that Roman flavor, just as the synagogue in, in Dura Europis had a Roman, a clear Roman influence. Uh, this small figure is Christ as Good Shepherd, uh, currently located in the Cleveland Museum of Art. It is from the third century, uh, so very much so a part of the Roman era. Uh, it's interesting that, that you, if you're not attuned to the symbolism or the imagery, it may be easy to pass over this item as a particularly uh, item of religious significance at all. But what you have to understand is that the early Christians often heavily relied on symbolism as a way of communicating their beliefs and communicating with one another without necessarily doing so in a uh, open manner as the, the Christian church was subject to uh, periodic bouts of persecution in uh, the early uh, in its early centuries. So the image that's being played on here is uh, on Jesus as a shepherd. Uh, now this draws back to the Hebrew scriptures. King David, who we saw anointed by Samuel on the wall of the synagogue at Dura Europis, was a shepherd. Uh, God is sometimes portrayed as the shepherd of his people Israel. The rulers of Israel are to be good shepherds. And the New Testament writers grabbed hold of all this language of shepherd. Uh, Jesus himself in the Gospel of John says that he is the good shepherd. And so we have here uh, a Christ figure with a sheep uh, upon his shoulders being brought back to safety. All right, well, maybe we should pause a, a little bit more and kind of back up and say, how do we talk about religion? How can we have uh, conversations about religion, especially granted that there's so much difference of view? Well, I have a little uh, chart here uh, that comes from Stephen Prothero of Boston University, a religious studies scholar. And he suggests that you can pretty much talk about every religion by using four categories. Number one, a problem. Number two, a solution. Number three, a technique. And number four, an exemplar. Uh, so for example, in, in the uh, Christian tradition, we could talk about the problem of sin. A solution to sin is forgiveness or atonement. The technique will, will be differently construed by different Christian traditions. According to Prothero's account, some would say prayer or uh, 
attending church, uh, making use of the sacramental system of the church, for example, or a belief itself as a technique. And then the exemplar would be Jesus and the various saints throughout Christian history. So this is just something to think about as you try to find ways of talking about different religious beliefs. Or if you're encountering someone and they have a different religious perspective uh, than you understand, maybe this is a simple way to discuss those uh, discuss those views, problem, solution, technique, and exemplar. In a moment when we switch gears and begin talking about the Islamic faith, we will do that and we'll look at the problem, solution, technique, and exemplar in the Islamic tradition. All right, uh, so this chart here uh, is, is trying to say something of the development of these Abrahamic faiths. So we began our discussion with Jewish monotheism. Uh, if you follow this uh, chart down the left side, you see that the early Christians uh, came to modify their view of Jewish monotheism by the early belief that Jesus was both divine and human. Now, obviously, that poses some problems. If there is one God and yet you are calling this man uh, in some sense divine, what do you do with that? Right? Well, the Christian church, interestingly, chose two pathways here. On one hand, on the one hand, they reaffirmed monotheism. There is one God. But then they also developed this doctrine of the Trinity, this idea that this one God is also three persons. Uh, identified traditionally using the traditional language of the Christian church as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, historically, uh, Islam developed uh, several hundred years after the birth of the Christian movement. And what we find here is that the key idea uh, was the revelation to Muhammad, the key historical moment when Muhammad the prophet was told to recite the words of the Quran by the angel Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel told him to recite, and so he began uh, reciting the words of the Quran. It is an affirmation of Jewish monotheism. Islam very consciously uh, saw itself, and Muhammad very consciously saw himself as a continuation of the, the Old uh, Testament prophets. Uh, Jesus is part of that prophetic history. And so again, we find here a reaffirmation of monotheism. However, we also see in Islam a clear denial of Trinitarianism. Uh, so that's kind of an important thing to note. Coming after the development of the Christian church, uh, the Islamic religion clearly denies the Christian idea of the Trinity. What are the important texts in Christianity? Well, there is the Hebrew Bible, which is considered the, uh, the early chapters of the Christian story. There is the New Testament uh, composed of gospels and letters. There are various early liturgies or, or services of worship that developed baptismal confessions. In other words, the kinds of uh, confessions of belief that would uh, be recited by a, a potential member when they were about to be about to receive what is known as the sacrament of baptism. And then a later uh, creed known as the Nicene Creed. Now, basically, this heritage uh, remains for all Christians or most Christians, at least. Uh, Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox, or otherwise throughout the world. Hebrew Bible, New Testament, liturgies, baptismal confessions, and the Nicene Creed. As I mentioned a few moments ago, the early Christians, when we think about the kind of artwork that they developed, they often resorted to using symbols of one sort or